The mother of all talk shows. The only education you can get for free. Only on Sputnik Radio. Get your calls in uh, for the final hour, 02077 982 255 if you're in Britain. And if you're in the US, 001 757 744 Or you can tweet me and RTUK News as well as email me. Now, uh, Dave Chona is a number one best selling author. I hope to be one myself one day. He's an award winning comic and he's a mental health campaigner. He wrote a terrific book called Weight Expectations, which I think is one of the best titles out there. One man's recovery from anorexia in 2018. He used to be a presenter at BBC's Tomorrow's World, remember that? And a presenter at an unknown local radio station, plus Fix Radio. And he was, uh, he's been a guest on Channel 4, uh, on ITV, BBC, Discovery Channel, Sky, and Sky News. But he's really uh, reached the peak of his career now because he joins me on the mother of all talk shows, which has a bigger audience than any of those aforementioned. <laughs> Dave, thank George, you George, couldn't much. have put it better myself. Oh, Look Jenny. at that. Well, there the you go. The highlight of not only my career, but my life, I think it's fair to say. Do you know this? I'm often uh, told by people that I introduce that they'd like me to come with them on tour and do their uh, introductions. So I'm available for uh, weddings and bar mitzvahs, as, as they Ready. say. So keep it in mind, uh, Dave, <laughs> yeah. uh, for that. First of all, let, let's, I mean, talk about the title, Weight Expectations, One Man's Recovery from Anorexia. Uh, well, seldom can a book have been more brilliantly titled, and the book uh, does what it says on the tin, uh, and it's sold uh, by the... By the ton, if you'll forgive the uh, pun. Uh, tell us about that book. What led to it? So, like, basically, I, I had anorexia for uh, a number of years, like 10 years, and I didn't really see many blokes talking about it. And also the thing that I think with mental health is it's really important, and we obviously understand that, but no one's joking about it. And I think people are uncomfortable and the original title, because it was all about anorexia, and I also wanted it to be funny, the original title, I really wanted to call it The Real Hunger Games, but apparently that infringes copyright. So oh, I wrote okay. this book that was like, sort of trying to demystify yeah, some uh, of them. And Charles Dickens is uh, long out of uh, copyright, so great <laughs> expectations. Uh, they couldn't have sued you for passing off. Uh, <laughs> so... Like, can, do you mind talking about the anorexia? Because yeah. I'm, uh, I'm fascinated uh, by that. Uh, it's something that in most people's mind mm. affects girls because of the pressure on girls about appearance and so on. Of course, there's pressure on boys, but the pressure on girls is relentless and massive. Uh, it's unusual, to me anyway, I mean, yeah. just have not met enough uh, people, but it's unusual for a bloke and even more unusual, one that's prepared to talk about it and write about it. Yeah, I think like, so I, I think you're absolutely right that a lot of blokes don't talk about it. If you look at the stats, about 10% of anorexics are men and it's going up year on year on year. And it's, you know, a lot of, uh, sort of body pressures, but also disease coping mechanisms, et cetera. And I kind of found uh, that it's really useful sort of trying to write and read and listen to other people's stories. And that's why I kind of wanted to uh, do the book so that it could be like a positive force to try and get other people to open up. And you know what? Like more and more people are coming out. More and more people are talking about mental health rather than mental illness, which is really exciting. And it's, yeah, I think, to be honest, like the body positivity movement's moving forward and a lot more people are aware of it now and getting increasingly understandable about it. And how long, you said several years, how long were you anorexic and how bad did it get? So I, I sort of, well, at the age of 17, I sort of slipped into it and I didn't get any treatment until I was like 24. And even then I didn't really want to get help 
for it um, because I kind of, again, it was my coping mechanism and I knew very much what I was doing. And I was, you know, anorexia has the highest mortality rate of any mental health problem. And I knew what I was doing and I started writing the letters and sort of preparing all the stuff for when it would inevitably take me. But I, um, I sort of like got depression i couldn't deal with that anymore and i engaged with treatment so i had it for about eight or nine years before i actually got any help and one of the things i found really really difficult is i wanted to talk about it i wanted to be like the same person to people but i found as soon as people found out that i've got a mental illness they started treating me differently like something fragile and i get that that's because that was a caring loving thing but i just think that comedy and humor is such a great way of like interacting with people and putting them at ease that i thought it would be quite nice to use that to talk about it very openly i mean were you funny while you were ill <laughs> I mean, to be honest, George, a lot of people don't think I'm funny now. So I think that's, uh, that's you know, a, a different thing. But I, um, I think the thing is, it's really important to like, stress that I don't joke about anorexia. I joke around it in order to sort of try and raise awareness of that. And I think the difference between comedy and bullying is who's being laughed at. So sensitively using comedy in order to make people feel like it's something that they can ask questions. Because you know what? Yeah, maybe you might ask the wrong question, but if it comes from the right place, then I don't really think there is such a thing as a wrong question. It's actually up to us to kind of educate people and get them to sort of know and help us try and understand it a little bit more as well. And have you now, as it were, been typecast as this? Can you move on to <laughs> other subjects for your uh, comedy? Or are, you, are they always, as they say on The Sopranos, pulling you back in? <laughs> There's always like an element of that, but I I, real, I only realised the other day, I'd done five Edinburgh shows. The first one was about anorexia. The second one was about how I had to have as a circumcision when I was 26. Third one was about being well, a vegan. that must have been painful. <laughs> yeah, well, I originally wanted to call it From the Hood, but uh, they wouldn't let me with that <laughs> And I, I've done, like, really, like, when you look at the, the topics, they're, like, really dark and serious, but I think that kind of makes the most interesting topics for comedy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, obviously, it's the words that they say uh, that uh, subjects are really about timing. I mean, sometimes yeah. it's too soon uh, to uh, joke about things, but there comes yeah. a point at which it is correct to do so. And yeah. uh, I suppose circumcision at 26 is inherently funny if it's not you that's getting the chop. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, the issue uh, I'm really getting at is obviously people like Billy Connolly drew his humor from uh, the life that he lived. You drew your humor uh, from the, uh, the illness that you had. Um, what's going to happen now that you're rich and comfortable and you look, uh, you look at exactly the right weight, uh, where is your humor going to come from? I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to have to create something to complain about, really. I mean, that, that's, that's one of the things that I find uh, most difficult. I think that's why now I really... Um, we always talk about the one in four people that has mental illness, but I'm really interested in like, the four in four people that have mental health, that everyone has mental health, and I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. So we're always talking about illness, we talk about health and, and positivity rather than negativity, because as soon as you talk about mental health, people always think that you're going to talk about, uh, you know, stats and people dying and all that. And you know what? There's enough reason to be depressed in the world. And I think the hardest thing is trying to, like, be uplifting about it now. So I think that's the, the kind of way forward, and I want to sort of put on a, a more more light-hearted, more positive spin on what is normally treated as a very serious topic. Now, uh, where are you performing these days? How can people follow your work? And do you well, uh, uh, have you got a, a follow-up to weight expectations in yeah. the pipeline? <laughs> Well, I like, I, I'm not a very good writer. I mean, a lot of people were surprised that I could read, let alone write. So I don't think there's going to be another book, but I am working on a show at the moment that's going to uh, Glasgow Comedy Fest, Leicester Comedy Fest, Brighton Fringe, Edinburgh Fringe. We're going over to Sweden. So all around, and I'm on Twitter if anyone's interested. You're on Twitter as what? Uh, at Dave Chawner. At Dave Chawner, C-H-A-W-N-E-R. Dave, you're you a terrific sport. Yeah, I, I should be, uh, and I'm cheap also. Uh, <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you very much indeed for joining us on the mother of all talk shows. More power uh, to your elbow. Thanks very much.
uh, Dave, uh, for that. More calls on the way, but let me uh, get some of this paperwork uh, dealt with.